Hello all, 4Player Squad Gaming here, and this is our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guard series. These mining caverns were rumoured to be full of mithril, but instead they are full of gold, but not the sort to make you rich. This is the Aurum Vale. This is an optional dungeon that can be unlocked at level 47 by starting the quest Going for Gold. A lot of players completely miss this dungeon and unlock it much later in the game, however in my opinion it is well worth doing. We start this dungeon entering a large room full of adds and pools of gold. Do not stand in the pools as they debuff you and cause damage over time. It is recommended to stick to the left hand side wall and pull small groups of adds to not be overwhelmed. The nicks in this area will pull you towards them so be careful of your positioning. A good idea is to collect your adds and take them to a safe fight zone, clear them and progress. The large AoE from the nicks can be interrupted or dodged as normal. Once you have cleared a path you are met with the first boss very early on. Boss number 1 is Locksmith, random name for a plant but I like it all the same. Start the fight as normal with the tank gaining the enmity and facing the boss away from the party. Eagle eyed players may have noticed the more ball fruit in this area. Periodically throughout this fight Locksmith will debuff you with gold lung, at 2 stacks ideally or definitely at 3 stacks eat a more ball fruit to clear this debuff. At 3 stacks this debuff does huge damage and is near impossible to be healed through. The tank also needs to watch out for a melee attack, 100 lashings that deal significant damage. Or the party needs to watch out for gold dust, a circular AoE, interrupt or dodge this. Keep healthy and dealing damage and locksmith will soon fall. Your loot and more mobile fruit will be at the exit of this boss fight area. Clear the debuff if you haven't already done so. Progress through killing all the adds in the way. Prioritise the mobile fruit as after a time they will spawn into mobile seedlings. The gold vine in this area is also worth a mention, as with all mobiles if you are caught in its bad breath frontal cone AoE you will be debuffed, a lot, with at least 8 different debuffs. This can cause a huge problem for the party if the healer is affected so be mindful of your positioning, you can interrupt bad breath so that is always an option. It's a shame mouthwash isn't an ability. After this area is cleared make sure to open the next treasure coffer as you may have a chance to gain the mobile seedling minion, cute if you like green poisonous monsters I guess. Stick to the left and clear the diamites and bats in this next area. Be mindful of a rectangular AoE, simply dodge or interrupt. Also be careful of patrolling Veil vale Wisps that can join in the fight. Keep your pool small, clear them and proceed into the second boss fight area. Our second boss is the coin counter. This cyclops can hit you hard and mobility is important here. We want to keep our distance here if possible. We have 5 mechanics to watch out for. The three swings are 10 ton swipe, 100 ton swipe and 100 ton swing. The first two are frontal cones, dodge these as necessary. The swing is a large circular AoE, this must be dodged at all costs as it will most likely kill all inside. Both the 100 ton swing and swipe can be interrupted with stuns, so you have this as an option. Then we have two eye abilities, glower will cause damage and debuff with paralysis. Eye of the Beholder is more dangerous. This is a large range frontal cone that you can either close in on the coin counter to dodge or back away. It will deal significant damage if caught and cause damage over time. You want to damage the boss at a safe distance and the tank needs to dodge the frontal cones and interrupt what they can throughout. Healers need to be mobile and ready with Asuna to remove debuffs. Keep damaging the coin counter and you'll have him out of your way in no time. Pick up your loot and progress. Make your way through the caves killing the adds and being mindful not to bite off more than you can chew. You will again enter the golden tunnels. Remember to prioritise the fruit to stop them spawning into seedlings. Watch out for bad breath and clear this area. There is plenty of loot around this dungeon so keep an eye out. Before long you will make it to the final boss fight area. Enjoy the short cutscene. The final boss is the Miser's Mistress. Like the fight with Locksmith, there are more ball fruit around the area. Start the fight as normal with the tank gaining the enmity and aiming the boss away from the party. Watch out for Hooked Birds, which is the stackable debuff. Again at 2 stacks or higher, remove the debuff by eating more ball fruit. Bird Burrow can also add a stack, so keep an eye out for how many stacks you have. Damage dealers need to kill the fruit that spawns around the Mistress at around 50% health. Do this quickly to avoid more seedlings. Again we need to dodge bad breath. This time it is uninterruptible. Healers need to keep on their toes and be ready to assume at anyone who gets hit. The mobile fruit can also clear the debuffs as a secondary option. 
Watch out for Vine Probe, a frontal pillar AoE that can cause significant damage. Our aim is to remove the debuffs, damage when we can, and keep mobile. And soon enough, the boss will fall. There you have it, the Aurum Veil is complete. Remember to commemorate the party member you believe deserves it most and pick up your loot. If you think I've missed anything, or if there was anything you would like to see in my future videos, then please comment below. Today is Christmas Eve, so I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Stay safe. We are 4 Player Squad Gaming, thanks for watching.